Mark 6, 7 to 13. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No brick, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of the Lord. What would you say if a stranger asked you what it means to believe in Jesus Christ? Some people are searching and they really do want to know. Others just want to argue. In any case, the discussion can take many twists and turns. And your first reaction might be, uh, uh, let me call the pastor. <laughs> but you can't. You're just there and you're stuck. There are three fundamental points about this question I want to talk about this morning. The first is, what is belief? What does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? Well, the dictionary tells us that belief means to accept something as true. If we say believing in Jesus means accepting that Jesus truly is God's Son, come to save us from our sins, well then, okay, that's what we believe. But then, there is a question waiting in the wings. Prove it. How do you know this Jesus is who you are saying? worthy of belief. Well, then, now it really is time to call the pastor, right? <laughs> but you can't. you got to go the next mile so you get an idea. Oh, yeah. Well, when we say that we believe in Jesus Christ, we are accepting the truth of the biblical witness testifying to who Jesus is right there in the Gospels. Jesus is the Son of God and to save us from our sins, the Messiah of God. Well then, the next question is, how do we know the biblical witness is true? Good question. Now you've really got the pastor on speed dial. That's, that's a toughie. And that brings to mind another word, faith. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 has a classic definition of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That means that faith is this underlying confidence that we will receive that for which we hope. That underlying confidence. Well, then there's other definitions. And here is the one we most often use. Faith is trust in someone or something. That trust is a firm belief in the truth, the reliability, the strength of someone or something. And you know, for example, we all have to trust, don't we? We have to trust each other. Human relationships are built on trust, aren't they? What if you can't trust someone? People have to be reliable and trustworthy. So faith or trust 
is really fundamental in human life. And since not everyone is trustworthy, there is some risk involved in trusting. Because when we build relationships, we cannot know in advance the trustworthiness of the other person. And deception is always possible. Human beings can be deceived, and that's just part of the reality. You know, we can't even make decisions without trust. We might gather all the supposed evidence in the world about something and be really assured, trusting that this decision is going to be right, but we cannot really know until after we have made the decision and get the result. There's always this little bit of uncertainty until after the decision is made. So trust is really, really fundamental in life. And so faith is like belief. Trusting in something that necessarily cannot be proved ahead of time. So faith can believe, be belief in God. And faith can be belief in a set of religious doctrines or principles. Faith is trust. And then there's one final part of faith I want to talk about, and that is faith is allegiance or loyalty to someone. You know, if you're comrades in arms, you don't break faith with your comrades. You can't betray them. They might die. So that's part of it. You know, once you've taken the step of being willing to trust, then you've got to follow through. And if you don't follow through, that's like betrayal. And that hurts a lot. Okay, so what is belief? This acceptance that something is true. Belief based on faith, trust that it's true. Well, then the third thing I want to talk about is who is this Jesus? we proclaim that we believe in. So I ask you today, if you had to tell somebody who is this Jesus in whom you believe, what would you say? Now, I read the passage where Jesus is going out and teaching, and now he sends his followers out on their own mission trips to by But before then, there had been trouble in paradise. You see, the whole Gospel of Mark is about answering this question, who is this Jesus? And even his disciples, they get confused. They're not sure. They keep believing, but then they really don't understand many times. And some people accept who Jesus says he is, the Son of God obedient to the Father, allowing God's power to flow through him, and some don't. So here he'd been out and about teaching in the synagogue with great wisdom, healing people miraculously, gathering crowns, gathering fame. And so finally he comes back home to Nazareth. And he teaches in the synagogue. And the people start asking, wait a minute. How did he get all this wisdom all of a sudden? Why, he's just our local carpenter. He repaired my kitchen cabinets a few years ago. What's going on here? People weren't believing. He couldn't heal many because it wasn't the faith. He was astounded with so little faith. And they said, well, we know his mother, his sisters, his brothers. Who is this? They were doubtful. See, they were wrestling to know who is this Jesus in whom people are believing. So he, he 
comes back with his own retort, uh, what a biblical scholar called a, uh, a pithy aphorism. He <laughs> says, well, you know, a prophet is not welcome in his own home. That made him even more angry. And so did that. Went to another town taught him to sin. So people in Mark, they're wondering, and it's not automatic that you understand who Jesus is, and you got to have this belief, this faith, this trust, and this loyalty. So that's when Jesus sends people who do believe out on a mission trip. And I think the image of this mission trip is very instructive for us in terms of our faith, our trust, our allegiance. Because he tells them something that seems impractical on the front end. Don't take anything but the clothes on your back. Don't take any food. Don't take anything. Boom, boom, boom. You're going out in trust. You're going to put your whole trust that God will work through you. They are going out in trust. That God will provide. And if things will open up, they don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they'll be invited in to stay with someone. Well, stay there till you're ready to leave. But maybe you'll be rejected. Knock the dust off your sandals and go on down the road. That's like the life of faith. And Two by two. Not individually, but two by two. Followers on a mission are called to work together collaboratively. And they must do that. There's a lot of power, strength and, and, and power and people working together to do things that you couldn't do on your own by yourself. And so, as believers, we, even we here at IPC, Jesus is calling us on a mission. And it's got to be a mission of trust. And we go forward not knowing the outcome ahead of time. And maybe not even knowing what we're heading into. But by God, we're going out in trust. Knowing that God is with us and leading and guiding us. And we're going to see what happens. The opposite of that is like the people of Nazareth. Stay home. Make everybody fit right into your stereotype of who they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do so that I don't have to do anything different and I can be just comfy and safe. That's doubt. Living that life is living in doubt because you can't ever trust like it says in uh, Hebrews can't have the conviction of things not seen, the spiritual life. So we are called not to be like the people of Nazareth, but to be like those who took a chance on Jesus and went out trusting that God would provide. And by God, things opened up. They opened up, didn't they? People did let them into the house. Communities did hear their message, and it was the basic message of Jesus. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand, close enough to touch. Wow. And people embrace that because people need the kingdom of God. They need God's love. They need God's forgiveness. They need God's wisdom. They need God's justice. They need to have an open life that can embrace such wonderful values and they need to feel God's spiritual presence and, and move forward in life in a new way as opposed to just playing it safe like the people of Nazareth. And so this morning, we're on a mission. Every day we go out in the world, we're on a mission. Every time we come together in a group and we plan something and we do something, we're on a mission. Sharing the good news. God's love is there for you. 
Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And then, you know, when you're living in faith and openness to your own soul, receives healing. You become more whole. You don't remain stuck in old patterns that you don't like, but you can't get out of it. It's openness to your own healing, and your own healing leads to the healing of those around you, because so many people need healing. Don't so many people need to hear a kind word of forgiveness and grace? There's enough hostility in the world that if we, if, if we had the ability to never ever say another hostile word to anybody for the rest of our lives, that would be a great thing. Because there's just so much hostility and anger all around. Enough contentiousness and stubbornness and all that stuff that just makes us feel so bad. There is, but in God there is healing. In God, not one of us is beyond God's forgiveness. And we're doing what those disciples were doing. We've got it and we're passing it on. And obviously we're not perfect. But by golly, we're loyal. And we're just going to keep doing our best and growing. We can't stay the same and grow at the same time. Can we? Disciples are open at whatever stage of life. So we believe in Jesus as the Son of God, Son of the Father, filled with grace and love, sacrificed for all of us, who lets us know that God forgives us, who is the one who says, Be related to God. And He said, I won't leave you alone. God won't leave you alone. God's Spirit will be with you always. So we do walk in 